Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to another turn for the Foundation Patreon. Today we're going to cover matte surfaces and digital. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use Photoshop today. And we're going to kind of cover the base geoforms that we've done previously. I believe in term 5 we covered them. So now with our values there, I just put together a quick perspective grid just so I was able to, you know, quickly make this box right here. And before we get any further into it, let's first just lock in our box. So what I like to do is I like to have this on a clean layer. That way I can just clip right into it. So what we're going to do is after you, you plot out your box and you just sketch it in, I'm going to take my lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool, and I'm just going to take the corners of the box. I'm holding shift, so right now if I'm over here in this diagonal, if I hold shift, It'll either give me a 45 or a straight. So that's pretty awesome. Then I'm going to click. I'm letting go of shift, that way it can get its angle. Click. So if I'm off a little bit, you can actually hit the backspace button and it'll take you to your last point. That only works in this polygonal mode, I believe. Click. Now I'm going vertical again, so I'm holding shift. We're going to click back here and hit enter or close it off. So we have a 90% selected. We're going to go ahead and we just brush in that whole top surface. And let us label it. Since that's what we're all about right now. Value 1. Make this one a little bit bigger. Alright, so now that we have our top surface lit, this is going to be our shadow side because the light rays can't reach it from this light source. So our shadow side, which is the right side, will be, so we're looking at 90, now we're looking at 45. I'm going to select it, I'm going to lock the transparency, switch back to my airbrush, and just make it 45. Alright, so now, this right here, if I may, is now value 5.5. So let's pick this value of our object, since that's where the light is getting bounced from. And let's just bounce it in here. You want to make sure you're not pulling a map view and you're actually on your layer, not your mask. Alright, and then we'll just bounce it in there. And then over here, in this area, it's not getting hit that much because we have our shadow here. That's actually stopping the bounce. Like, you know, if a uh, light is hitting here, there's no bounce going on there. It's taking further to reach it. So if you kind of mirror that shape, your cast shadow shape in there, it'll give you a really good effect. Let's see, bounce back in. And we'll we'll do our cylinder. And what's cool is you saw I actually just did a different degree ellipse right now. And the reason why it doesn't matter too much is because you can actually just, you know, skew it into proportion. So if I lower the opacity, I can see the line drawing underneath. There's always that fun clipping going on when you hold a shift. So zooming in helps. And I use just like a little pink mask color right now, just once again to differentiate it so I can see what's going on underneath. Duplicating it and opening up the degree a bit for the bottom ellipse will help get me help let me get the front end of it. And then we'll just connect our two points on the sides and that'll fulfill this full ellipse. These are all the same value uh, objects, 
So I'm going to make my core shadow begin right where light hits it parallel. So where the light angle is 90 degrees to my object, that is where it essentially turns into shadow. And it's no longer being affected directly by the light. By the main light that is. It can still get hit with bounce light off objects, off the floor. But that's where this core shadow is formed. It's the furthest point right where light is tangent to it. So that's actually going to be the darkest point. Not the furthest point from the light, but where the light's tangent to it. Alright, and just like before, we have our cylinder. Its front face is getting hit by light, which we cannot see. It's going to bounce into that shape now. Kind of brush it in there. And you want to use a tool that is the easiest for you to understand. Or not that, but the tool that will get the job done right the most effectively. So I'm not using a hard brush, I'm not using a texture chalk brush. I'm simply using selections with an airbrush. And that gives me the outcome that I'm looking for. Otherwise, if I try using a hard brush, it might come out really muddy. You know, even with opacity on, it's, it's not going to get me this nice blend I'm looking for. So that's what we initially had. That was our sketch. We turn that into this. Not too bad. Cool, so... Let's keep in mind our light side, which is our one side. Our shadow side, which is our three side, as well as our medium, our two. Let's keep in mind our core shadows, cast shadows, as well as bounce light. Those alone will allow you to render any geometric object in a map view. Alright, thanks for watching.